Heritage Center, UNESCO, declared the Cape Floristic Region in 2004 a World Heritage Site. And one can ask why. It's just that this region is so rich and so diverse. It has such a great uh, uh, amount of species, almost 10,000 species crammed in a small little area of the Cape. And it's, it's mainly associated with the uh, Cape Folded Mountains and its uh, uh, quartzitic sandstone mountains, uh, poor, uh, giving rise to poor soil, but uh, uh, so much various habitat that it, uh, uh, and it creates, that it's an amazing region, uh, uh, diverse habitats. And uh, if one think of, for instance, the, uh, the Proteaceae and the Ericaceae, all unique uh, families, and that brings me to the, the Cape Floristic region are one can are one of the world's uh, uh, six uh, uh, floral kingdoms. And what is a floral kingdom? It's it's a unique assemblage of plants which are quite uh, quite different and also usually associated with a geographic region. Table Mountain has 1,500 plant species. And then compared to, for instance, the whole of the British, the UK has got only 1,400 uh, plant species. Thus, a, a small area, very, very rich. And it's, if one think of it, it's only 0,05% of the, the world's surface area. So it's a very, very small region. What shapes Feinbos are a, a number of factors. And the one is, the number one factor is the climate, and that is summer aridity. In other words, there's not much uh, uh, rain during summer. In winter, uh, the rain, uh, so it's got a quite short growing period. The other uh, factor is uh, lots of wind, southeasterly winds, and then uh, uh, as well, very important is fire. And fire, fires that usually come every uh, six to 15 years. And the plants are marvelously adapted to this fire, but, but also the other thing, the important thing that I uh, almost forgot are the, uh, the poor soils. And, uh, uh, and it's usually, and it's very, very interesting, if one think of the, the oceans, it's the, the, the Indian Ocean, are poor in nutrients, rich in species, as well as the Atlantic Ocean, are very uh, rich in nutrients, but poor in species, and it's exactly the same. And that uh, brings me to the reason why it is so rich. And it's often, uh, scientists uh, think that uh, uh, stress, the stress factor uh, uh, leads to uh, speciation. In other words, plants and animals have to adapt to harsh conditions and that make this, makes them specialist and each occupying a, uh, a certain niche. For instance, the Cape uh, 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 Folded Mountains, these big massive sandstone mountains with its poor soils, got many, many different habitats, ranging from uh, uh, marshes, for instance, and uh, uh, dry habitats, the cliffs, each have got its own little habitats and where these species uh, became adapted. But also to fire, which is amazing how they are adapted, that after a fire you find a, a number of, uh, uh, of adaptations. Uh, 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 the plants, uh, the, the fire destroys, it seems that the fire destroys everything. But if one, uh, shortly after the fire, is, uh, uh, some plants will only re-sprout, others will only come up from seeds and then there are also the pyrophytes or, or, or fire plants and they will only come up after a fire the first season and they disappear. For instance Micropter Mary, it's a little mesem that grows here on Table Mountain area and for years I've been looking for this plant, could never find it. But after a fire we had, there were lots of the plant and uh, and it's again, it's disappeared and it will disappear until it will have a next uh, fire occurrence. For In this case for instance, and, and why it only comes after fire is that after a fire, there's an open niche, and this plant uh, has got all the opportunity to grow, got all the minerals from the fire that, and, uh, and the soil without competition of any other plants. So this plant grows opportunistically well, sets lots of seed, but then disappears and will only uh, uh, and it's, uh, will only come up after the next fire event. And one of my colleagues, Dr. Hannes de Lange, find that it's not the, the fire itself, it's not the heat that stimulates the, the seed to germinate, but it's a substance in the smoke and he did experiments and, and therefore today we are using this uh, uh, smoke treatment for seeds and we get uh, uh, amazing germination. For instance, ericas in the old days when we sowed erica seeds, we get 15% germination. Now treated uh, uh, with smoke, the, the germination is uh, uh, almost 80%.
The one commodity they have in Feynman's region is that they have got a lot of sun. And with sun and photosynthesis, the plant can manufacture. They can manufacture lots of sugar. So many of the Feynman's plants have got big uh, uh, flowers, beautiful flowers in fact. And that's to attract pollinators. So Feynman's plants have got, they, they put a lot of effort in the, uh, attracting uh, the right pollinators. But they, they, it's usually specialist pollinators because for the production of, of seed, and, and seed needs a, a lot of nutrients to be able to germinate. So if, uh, some famous plants, uh, like for instance Leucospermums, the Purtias and Iricas, uh, produce fewer seed, but specialist seed. In the case of the, the Leucospermums or the, the pincushions, uh, they've got an eliosome, and this eliosome is uh, uh, and attract ants, and ants will. will will utilize that as food and uh, take it down to their nests. So the, the seeds will be protected in the nest uh, and only after a fire event will, will they germinate for instance. And then uh, also coming back to pollination, there are various birds uh, that do pollination as well and especially in the larger species like Protea itself and they're very sugar rich and uh, they say sugar rich in prior times, the, the sacred boss, that's where the name sugar boss comes from, we utilize as a, uh, as a form of uh, getting sugar from the plants. So the sugar was shaken out and eaten, but the, the, what the point I want to make here is that these birds, the sugar birds in the Cape, they're endemic to the Cape area and they live off the sugar uh, uh, within the, the, the flowers. And then not only that, there's also these little sunbirds, which is the orange-breasted sunbird, endemic to the area. Lots of the ericas produces uh, long tubular flowers adapted for sunbird pollination, just like the aloes, for instance, and uh, uh, producing a copious amount of nectar, enabling uh, and then feeding the, these beautiful little birds. When uh, European travelers came to South Africa in the 17th century, they found it was so the flora was so different, they couldn't familiarize themselves with it. There were no oaks, there were no pine trees. It was so unique, everything had to be named as new. They, termed, they then named it as the uh, Cape uh, Floral Kingdom.